I'm going to start this video with how I'm going to be ending my final review is do not use these shoes, the Vibram KSOs, the originals for outdoor hill walking or trails. Uh, these are not the right shoes for them and uh, the rest of this video you'll see why. But what I will say, the next bit I'll put at the end of the video. Ugh. In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference uh, in Vibram Five Fingers, in the two uh, pairs which I still have at the moment. So I have my very original ones, the uh, Vibram KSO. These are as basic as they get and as minimalist as they get from uh, Vibram. That's, that is for sure. The other ones which I have are the um, V-Run or the Bikila. Um, same kind of thing. This one uh, looks cooler, has more colours to it and actually has some form of grip stuff going on there. But what what's the difference and why would you choose one or the other? And one thing which I have noticed is that a lot of people who promote um, barefoot running or minimalist running, they say to start off with the KSO or the, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the current one's the KSO Evo. But if you go for the very original ones, it's, these, these are, these are like bizarrely, like nothing compared to, the, like, especially even compared to, so even though the Bikilas or the V-Runs can fill it up with a tiny little shoe and they have like a millimeter worth of padding, it's, these are a world away from these. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a little um, hill walk, but this time in these ones. So these have no effective <laughs> grippy bits and they are substantially um, softer than the Bikilas, even though the Bikilas are incredibly soft. They are, these ones are just super soft. Um, but uh, what are the benefits of these? And before I go for a run, I'll tell you what I think the benefits are. One, Incredibly light. Um, we're talking about for a pair, they're under 400 grams uh, in total. Um, they're very simple to get on and off. Uh, it's just a simple strap and they're very, it's hard to say comfortable because comfortableness is all about what's underneath your feet. With these, having almost no protection, like you're protected from a sharp stone, glass, that's about it. <laughs> With these, you're set, you're from bigger stones, glass, maybe even a nail, uh, you'd be fairly protected uh, with this. But with this stuff, it's even less protection. But what that makes you have to do is it makes you have to run super carefully. So if you're somebody who has uh, an injury, maybe you've got some IT band issues, maybe you've got some ligament damage in your knee, maybe you've got just tight hamstrings or something like that. If you go for the most basic of Vibram shoes, of five finger shoes, it forces you to run as delicately, as lightly, and effectively as safely as you possibly can. Um, again, with all sort of uh, Vibram five finger shoes, I would say always start off very slow and very minimal. So start off with just wearing them, start off with just walking around your house, then move on to walking around the street, and then only after a while start doing it walking on grass, um, and then after, it takes a long time until you're actually like out for a happy 30 minute jog on concrete. Oh, that, give yourself at least two months until you think that that's going to happen without you being, uh, having huge calf, uh, what do you call it when, when you, um, when you get pumps, yeah, huge calf pumps going on uh, from that. Um, so always, always take it slow with these, but with these, you have to be running like a ball ballerina, like a dippy toes running everywhere. Small steps, and if you want to go faster, you just do more steps. There's no bounding, there's no pounding, there's no big strides. It is it's one way to be as delicate on the ground as you possibly can, because if you're not delicate on the ground, the ground comes up with just as much force as you put down. So if you're on any sort of ground which there might be a stone or a jaggy twig, you're gonna feel it. Uh, so you want to be as tippy-toes ballerina as possible, but can we still use these for what I'm about to do? A bit of a hill walk. Let's see how it works. One thing's for sure is that there is very, very little protection with these shoes. Uh, on this path, which I've jogged along many times before, uh, oh, oh, um, in the, in the, um, 
tequilas, the V runs, you, you can just run. You can just go for it. You just have to run in your forefoot. Here, if your heel touches any of those, you're effectively completely barefoot in these. Every single stone you feel, um, which which is great. <laughs> A bit painful, definitely. Is that already more painful these shoes? Um, so I'm not. I doubt I would really recommend these ones for like grassy, soft paths. Good stony bits. Like I can feel every every stone under my foot. It's uh, wait until the endorphins kick in. I think I said earlier that uh, these shoes will definitely make you maybe go slower and all that kind of stuff. And for uphills, um, definitely. Uphills with rocks, you will be going substantially slower. Um, just because like at this point here, I'm trying to think, right, where am I going to put my feet? Because if I put my foot even on a little bump like that, oh! So I have to be with these shoes, which have no, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, I have to kind of go right. If I go in between those two stones there, that's going to be safe. And then I'm also thinking because they have pretty much no grip, I think if I have it on the stone, that will slip. I need it kind of halfway in between the stone and on the mud. And then you need to think, where's my next foot going to go? Should I put it there? Well, I need some more balance over there. But over here, there's that stone. I need to look at that. Okay, I need to avoid that stone. So, oh, that one could be sore as well. Oh, so I go from here. Oh, uh, yes, that was safe. <laughs> so, my goodness, when you're using these shoes out on a hill walk, these are not for hill walking. These are not for hill trekking. Not the slightest. These are definitely for flat park, uh, maybe a running track, maybe in the gym, uh, on a running machine. <laughs> Outside where you're actually having... St and also, don't do it in bad visibility. If you can't focus 100%, <laughs> if your glasses are maybe a little bit steamed up, or, uh, or it's getting a bit dark, or a bit misty, uh, this is going to be painful. Painful uphill trip. Um, yeah, the KSOs, the most basics of Vibrams, not to be used outside, I'd say. <laughs> um, but at the same time, this is, a, this is the funny thing, is that it makes it fun. It makes it interesting. I think, I think I've heard it a few times before where people in the barefoot running community say that the, the point of these shoes isn't necessarily to make you run faster. You may not run faster. It may help you have a safer run, may help you avoid injuries and all that kind of stuff. It'll definitely strengthen your calves if you do it the right way and your tendons and all that stuff. But it makes, it's like on, on a hill walk like this, you have the benefit of getting some fresh air, being in nature, amazing views, uh, the landscape, the views, the, you know, that's what you're getting from it. But going going barefoot style there's an additional element of of interest of of uh, of cognitive part to your walk of going every step that you're taking every bit of the terrain that you're covering is an element to your walk I don't I don't know how to describe it but instead of it just being I'm going for a hill walk I'm gonna climb up a hill you're you're thinking about every step every you're, you're focusing on, like, there's green grass, there's dead grass, should I go more on the dead grass this way? And then there's lines on the ground here. You're just so much more involved with the ground that you're, you're covering, that, the ground that you're going over. And maybe some people would hate that. Maybe some people just kind of go, I just want to get to the top of the hill and look at the view. But, uh, as I say, sometimes the journey is... Uh, the journey is the fun bit, and the destination is not the goal. I don't know, there's a phrase somewhere where the destination isn't the goal, it's the journey that you take. Don't know, somebody knows the phrase there. But yeah, these shoes make the journey more interesting and an actual element of the goal, which is to get to the top of the hill and look at the view, I think. But ooh! Stones, 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 stones. So there's no chance of actually running over this stuff. Well, for me and my delicate feet. 
Ooh. Ooh. Oh, here's something additional which you probably won't have ever heard in any other review of these shoes. Um, they, these ones, their material is so soft, it is literally just a mesh. In fact, it's so stuck to my skin. Uh, it's just tiny. And when running through this, uh, if you're actually running through like low level grass, it's, uh, it whips your feet, all these little um, bits of plants coming through your like, shoe, shoo, which, it's fine until you're doing it quite fast and it's actually quite sore. So yeah, even more kind of evidence that uh, the KSOs are not great for outside. It's, oh, there's a little bug, a little bug in me. Um, is uh, the, other, the other shoes have a bit more uh, sturdier material on the top. So these definitely for in the gym, in the park, on the road, in the house, in the office, not for outside. Well, not for outside in the hills like this. Even though it's lovely. So this is the bit which I said I'd put at the end of the video. Um, these shoes, yeah, are not the best for trail running. Running. Um, not the best for walking on any sort of stone. So where do these work? Where does the KSOs work? These very light, material, thin, um, very little padding work. In the house, cutting grass, maybe if you're in the garden, uh, maybe if you're in the gym, uh, if you're in the gym and you're doing weightlifting and you need something which is flat on the ground, um, if you're on a treadmill, on a track, on a cross trainer, cross trainer would be good. Uh, if you're just doing stuff around the house, if you're on holiday, if you're going on holiday and it's going to be a hot place and the beach is very nice, but the sand might be too hot for your feet, but you don't want to be taking a big pair of shoes and trainers, yeah, these, these would definitely be the shoes uh, to take along. I had these on my recent holiday to Croatia, which was very hot. And uh, I, it's great because they're so light, the water just pours out of them. You can go walk into the kiddies pool. I have a child. And you can walk into the, <laughs> into the pool with your kid, I should say. Uh, and then walk back out, lie on the, on the um, uh, you know, walk around the place with these on without having to get shoes on or having burning hot feet. Then lie on the lounger and your feet would just dry out. So um, they definitely have their place and they will get you walking barefoot style, which is uh, what is will help people if they've got injuries or if they're just getting into walking or running or jogging or hill walking or trail running. Um, but yeah, if you, if you're like me, you enjoy the challenge of a good hill um, and, uh, and you want to do it barefoot style, but not suffer the the twinge pain of oh, stood on a on a oh, on a bad sh on a bad stone. Uh, these will give you that that kind of feeling. Um, the the whole joggy joggy jogging and then the oh, oh that was a stone right in the sole of my foot kind of feeling. That's what these these definitely do. So these are for definitely more controlled environments because there's just no protection at all. But yeah, expensive for what they are, but. Uh, but do make things more interesting, that's for sure.